Welcome back at 644 on Daybreak. And 40 years ago, a West Side landmark went up in flames in one of the most epic fires the neighborhood has ever seen. But like a phoenix from the ashes, the Connecticut Street Armory was rebuilt. And as we find in this week's unknown story of Western New York, it took going back into the earth for some of the original building materials, Medina Sandstone. Uh, I was an MP with the Tool 6 MP company. I responded immediately on my own. Joe Murray lived only a few blocks from work, so he got there quickly and was set to watch the Connecticut Street side. I was in the front of the building. The flames were in the back of the building. All I could see was smoke. As the fire grew, so did the crowds. And for the people who lived in this neighborhood at the time of the fire, those images are still extremely vivid. I can tell you firsthand, a 16-year-old Pete Gallivan was sitting on that porch as the fire burned over there. That is just before the soldiers chased us away. Likely because small explosions started in the rear of this massive structure. That's where the large equipment was stored. A lot of things run through your head when you hear little booms going off and then large booms. About 100 vehicles were burnt to a crisp. I, I um, realized after the fact that it was the fuel tanks and the vehicles, mainly the ones that weren't topped off because they gave expansion of the fuel to expand and explode. Many of them melted into the floor. We had uh, Jeeps at the time just like compressed into the ground due to the extreme heat. As firefighters worked into the night, they were finally able to douse the flames, but not before $5 million damage was done and about a 1,000 neighbors had to be evacuated from the surrounding streets. The firewall held up to the inferno and saved the front portion of the historic building. And as you can see by this aerial picture of the aftermath, the Medina sandstone walls were about the only thing that stood up to the flames in the back section of the building at least giving them something to work with when they rebuilt. They wanted to replace it, the sandstone, but there wasn't enough sandstone in the area, so they had to open up a quarry. Jim Hancock of the Medina Sandstone Society says they had to pull 750 tons of stone out of a previously closed quarry in Halberton. Is it amazing to you that as much of it was able to be rebuilt? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, for them to open up a quarry to get new stone um, and rebuild the whole exterior uh, that, that fell, um, yeah, that was, it's, it's amazing. Building Superintendent Jonathan McKee showed me the elaborate woodwork in the Grand Court that was saved by the firewall and, of course, the work of the firefighters. The back section, the former drill hall, had to be totally rebuilt. Gone are the original bleachers and the woodwork, but the important thing is this West Side landmark still stands tall 40 years after a massive fire put its future in serious question. And its mere existence, another chapter in the unknown stories of Western New York. And the 40th anniversary of the fire was actually last July 12th. In honor of the construction and beauty of the 124 year old building, it was inducted into the Medina Sandstone Hall of Fame. Yes, there is such a thing hmm. back in 2015.